To understand how the tube network has grown so big, we must travel back in time. In the 19th century, London already had a massive traffic problem. To solve it, the city wanted to build a new kind of railway that ran in a tunnel deep underground. In 1880, London badly needed a transport revolution. Its financial district, the city, was growing fast. Masses of commuters flooded in from the suburbs every day. The advent of mainline railways in the 1830s and 40s meant it was increasingly easy to get to London by train. The problem was getting into the heart of London. The Victorian railway terminals were in a ring around the outside of the traditional city, and that led to problems for travellers who wanted to get into the heart of London, the financial centre, and also across London. Trains were forbidden from crossing central London for fear of damaging historic buildings. So commuters spilled into already congested streets. Then an engineer had an idea to build a tunnel deep under London and take trains right into the heart of the city. The engineer was James Henry Greathead. He called his project the City and South London Railway. But digging the tunnels for the underground train line would be a nightmare, as Londoners knew from the time when they built the city's sewers. First, you had to stop all the traffic. Then workers propped up the houses and dug a deep trench right through the middle of the street. They lined the trench with bricks and topped it with an arched roof. Finally, they covered their tunnel and rebuilt the street. Only then could it reopen to traffic. Digging up the streets to build tunnels was not the way forward for Great Head's underground line. Another option for Great Head was to burrow a tunnel deep below the streets of London. But his men would have to do this with picks and shovels, which is slow and dangerous. Digging a traditional railway tunnel in London in Victorian times was both risky and expensive business. Digging the tunnel by hand required constant shoring up. There's always the danger of the tunnel caving in. But Greathead invented a totally new way of digging tunnels. These iron panels were laid by an amazing digging machine that Greathead built called a tunneling shield. At the front of the machine, workers dug through the London clay. Every 60 centimeters, powerful hydraulic jacks rammed a metal cylinder forwards into the gap. Behind it, workers attached iron panels to shore up the exposed tunnel wall. Finally, they squirted concrete through the panels to create a rock-solid waterproof tube. Two shifts of men drove the tunnel forward 24 hours a day, deep below London, without disrupting the traffic above. The shield allowed them to tunnel it up to three metres a day, which was a remarkable achievement. This allowed them to build tunnels faster, cheaper, and in a safer way. With Great Head Shield, workers completed the City and South London Railway in just over four years. It was a big hit with commuters. Over five million of them used it in its opening year. Great Head Shield went on to dig many of the tunnels for what we know today as the London Underground. And the typical shape of its tunnels gave the network its nickname, 
the tube. A hundred years after the first tube line opened, the London Underground needed a big upgrade. To borrow the tunnels, engineers took the idea of Greathead's digging machine to the extreme. In the 1990s, a brand new financial center opened up in the docklands of Canary Wharf. To link it to the underground network, city planners had to extend the Jubilee Line 10 miles to the east. The weapon of choice to dig the tunnels was a souped-up version of the Great Head Shield, a tunnel boring machine. At the front of the machine, sharp steel cutters in a huge rotating wheel rip out the soil and rocks. A conveyor belt then takes the spoil backwards out of the tunnel. Hydraulic arms line the tunnel with steel mesh to stop the exposed roof from falling in. And finally, a robot sprays quick-drying concrete onto the walls to make the tube rock solid. In perfect conditions, this digging demon can burrow up to 45 meters a day. On the Jubilee Line extension, two of these monsters ate their way through the London soil.